here. Hi, my name is Aiden Bai. I'm a sophomore at Canvas High School, and for my project this year, I wanted to make web development faster by creating a JavaScript library for developing performance-focused web applications. Back in the pioneer days of the web, websites started out as extremely simple and static. They were often non-interactive and didn't require any JavaScript. Nowadays, interactivity is required. Just think about it. When you go to Amazon or Google, search up something or click a button, that's interactivity. To produce interactivity, JavaScript is required. However, JavaScript is often cumbersome to work with. So what developers have done is they created JavaScript libraries to help simplify that process. However, JavaScript libraries are slowly becoming more and more complex and non-performant, resulting in a bad user and developer experience. This means higher load times and sluggish performance for the user, as well as less maintainability and harder migration for the developer. Overall, this is a huge issue for web developers. I'm going to demonstrate a quick um, demonstration of Lucia's code. Um, please pay attention. We're going to be starting out with a to-do list example. As you can see, a to-do list is essentially a place where you can put tasks and it'll put it in a list. Our example here is written in JavaScript, and as you can see, the code is quite long and complex. It's around 30 lines of code. Not only this, JavaScript needs to be written, and the performance benefits are marginal. Um, furthermore, when we attempt to duplicate the to-do list, the first one works, but the subsequent ones do not. This is because JavaScript is not scalable or reactive. When we, switch to, when we switch to Lucia, you can see there's much less code written. There's no JavaScript written, and the logic is declarative and simple. When I attempt to write um, some tasks here, it works just the same, and it's quite performant, and we'll discuss this later. When we attempt to duplicate the to-do list, as you can see, the first one works, and the subsequent do work. This is because Lucia is scalable and reactive. So how do I achieve its performance and simplicity? Well, I need to default two main design principles, speed and simplicity. For speed, I utilize conservative execution, which is only doing things when they're necessary, and immutable patterns, which is assuming everything doesn't change by default, to hypercharge the compiler render, proce uh, compiler render process. This allows for exceptional performance during the web page. To ensure fast page load times, I made a very lightweight core um, so that the API and plugins can be added on demand. For simplicity, I followed two main design principles, scalability and reactivity. Scalability was kind of the concept we saw before when duplicating the to-do list. When the to-do list was duplicated, it would just work. That's scalability. For reactivity, um, it is best demonstrated in figure two. As you can see in figure two, we have a spreadsheet example. The content of cell A3 depends on con sorry, the content of cell C3 depends on content cell A3's content. So when cell A3's content is changed, then cell C3's content will change automatically. This is not the case with JavaScript. I coded my code base in TypeScript. I built it with Rollup and Babel. I hosted my code on GitHub and published to NPM and Unpackage. I tested with Jest and did ad hoc testing on the side. And I wrote all my code in VS Code. In Figure C, you can see my procedure. I start off by creating the core and the API, the application programming interface, which is the main part of the code base. I also did unit testing and debugging, which is also part of the code base, but it's separate just to make sure the actual code base is tested and working. Then I published it and promote it so that more developers are aware of it and are actually are able to use it. Let's take a look at the implementation. It consists of two phases, the compilation phase and the runtime phase. It also consists of two cycles, the initialization cycle and the react cycle. The initialization cycle only happens once, but it happens on page load, and the reactive cycle happens um, throughout the page. It starts off by taking the website's content as data as a document object model. The document ob object model is fed into the compiler, which converts it to data Lucia can understand in the abstract syntax tree. The abstract syntax tree is then fed into the render, which is able to decide which parts of the abstract syntax tree needs changing. In this case, all of it needs changing because it's initializing. Then it heads off to the directors. The directors are functions that are able to change the website's content. 
um, and the initialization cycle is completed. Now we move on to the reactive cycle. It starts off by taking the user state, which essentially state or data that kind of represents or models the website's content. It's fed into the observer, um, which detects changes in the user state. And when there's a change, it fires a render signal into the render. The render will decide which parts of the AST needs changing. This time it's not every single one of them. And it heads off to the directives, which subsequently changes the website's content. This compared to its contemporary KVO and virtual DOM models is much simpler, faster, and straightforward, resulting in exceptional performance as well as simplicity in maintainability. Let's see the actual data. Well, I first, in figure five, you can see some of the benchmarks I did. I did qual qualitative and quantitative benchmarks. Um, as you can see, the baseline, which is just JavaScript, is in the green and with the best performance, while Lucia is close behind, also in the green, with very exceptional performance. Um, while the mainstream libraries like React, Angular, Vue are in the yellows and oranges and reds, uh, signifying subpar performance. This is summarized into a weighted score, which is the average of these quantitative um, benchmarks, and visualized in figure six. As you can see, the baseline and Lucia are very, very low, um, which is expected for a baseline, but Lucia demonstrates exceptional performance, while the mainstream libraries have very high scores. This means they have subpar performance. In fact, if you average out the mainstream library scores, um, you'll find that it is five times larger than Lucia's. So yeah. Um, I'm going to show a quick visualization of the page load data. So um, tell me if you are able to actually detect the page load. It's super fast. And it's already loaded. So I, I, I was actually a second late there. As you can see, these are the top three libraries that are benchmarked. Um, and these are it's comparing its page load times based on its raw size development bundles with 100 times slowdown. I'm not going to waste your time here, but as you can see, Lucia's page load is extremely fast. So because of its exceptional performance, speed, and simplicity, it's being used by many developers already. In fact, it's being used by a German tech startup called Wegly, as well as developers on platforms such as Glitch.com and Replit. It's already been featured in major developer publications like YC Hacker News, Tech Media Haber, and JavaScript Weekly. And in response, it's received over 440 plus stars, if you compare this to YouTube subscribers, it might be 50,000 YouTube subscribers, as well as 20,000 unique visitors to the GitHub repository. In figure seven, you can see some of the websites that have been created with Lucia. And to the far right is the Wegly website, that the German tech startup I mentioned before. In conclusion, Lucia is super simple to integrate and is extremely fast. It's already been implemented in many use cases and is production ready. Um, personally, I learned a lot about how JavaScript libraries work. In fact, when I came into this process eight months ago, I didn't know much about like React or Vue, but now after eight months of work, um, 10 to 15 hours per week, which is a lot of work over time, and just dedicating myself to this for a solid eight months, um, I, lear I learned to appreciate why these libraries are so popular and how they're powerful in a lot of these kinds of um, applications when developing a website. and in, as a result, I'm proud to have innovated upon a lot of the pitfalls and actually created a useful product that developers are able to benefit from and really reap the benefits. For my next steps, I want to promote this to more developers so they're aware of it and can benefit from this product. And I want to create tooling for more complex use cases for a final 1.0.0 version. For more information, you can check out the website and GitHub. I'm going to provide the links in the description as well. Here's some of the references I use for my project. And here's a scientific poster for viewing pleasure. Thank you so much for listening. Are there any questions, concerns, or comments?